Good day, gamers. Welcome to Our Gaming Life. I am your host, A Formal Bust, and with me today is... Your boy, Yort. Thank you for being here, uh, Yort, and uh, we have plenty to dive into, but first, as always, our sponsor, my sponsor, everyone's sponsor, H2O, drink it up or die. Oh, that's delicious. You know, it's a little disgusting, what? but I do love when you drop the water back down, just a little molecules or a droplet just splashes up into your nose gets a little oh. hydration into Look. your nasal cavity right where you need it along with your you know throat mouth body. it's one of it's one of the many benefits that comes with drinking our sponsor h2o yeah. you know you also get a free nasal cleaning if you're dedicated enough yeah and you get to live <laughs> now first things first uh, we have a little education on video game terminology uh last episode we had uh, do you remember what we had troy last no. episode what was it last episode it was you have abandoned you have completely abandoned the gaming terminology from last time this is not true uh it was <laughs> what was it abandoned where I, I was, swear to God. I was throwing you a I bone. I swear to God. I was throwing you a bone. I was, I was like, maybe. Yes, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. It was... It, it, oh, it's uh, software that, yeah, yeah, essentially no one updates anymore, yeah. so no yeah. one falls... It falls away, yeah. hence emulators and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, uh, yeah, abandonware, very sad, but also still legally hot water at times. Mm. Uh, but this week we have a uh, pretty standard, uh, I would say, gaming term, uh, kind of in the gaming industry term, not necessarily a gaming in the game term, uh, developer, specifically a video game developer, because the term developer kind of refers to anyone and any, you know, entity that develops uh, software of any sort. Whereas in our specific use case scenario, we're talking about video game developers. Uh, they are a software dev specializing in video games. Okay. Shockingly. Yes. And uh, they can range from, as I said, for normal software, anywhere from like one person up to a large uh, AAA uh, gaming company. Um, well, really any company, but gaming companies are the largest ones that do it, uh, AAAs. Um, but they're, but they, they code software? Or they, they... They, they, they... Well, so we can get to that later. <laughs> Sorry. But, but, but they, they create, they develop the game, right? They can either take an, a pre-existing game engine, right? Like Unreal. Unreal's very big about this, how Unreal's like, hey, everybody, use it, use it. Yeah, yeah. Um, And so th that's, you can create a, you know, uh, gaming um, graphics engine and everything and then sell it to people for them to use or give it to them for free. But whether you're doing that or building a gaming engine from the ground up for your specific game, you're still a gaming developer either way. Okay. Because right? you're, yeah. you're, you'll be editing the software no yes. matter what. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. And most of the larger um, gaming developers self-publish. Um, and uh, the self-published, uh, uh, sorry, self-funded devs, which we'll talk about a little bit later, is uh, indie devs. So people who either don't take a contract or don't um, uh, uh, aren't owned by a large company. They're just, you know, usually in your garage is the term for it because they're usually <laughs> smaller uh, outfits. Yeah. Um, many special, uh, many different gaming devs specialize in um, either a specific genre or sometimes a specific uh, platform. Whether it be like, oh, we only make Xbox games, or we only make PlayStation games, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, and there's three sort of types of gaming devs um, in the uh, games media terminology. You have first-party devs. Um, those are the people that uh, make consoles, uh, or sorry. Yes, they usually make consoles or, you know, are owned by a company that makes consoles. Um, and they make games only for that console. Hmm. So, specifically, they make consoles and games for that console. And then there's second-party devs. Um, those ones take contracts from companies that make platforms and make games only for those platforms. Um, so, you know, if you were to... If you, were, if you made a console and you were publishing your own games and you wanted an extra game, re, you would reach out to me and I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll make, a game only for your, I'll make games only for your platform. Just okay. keep, keep having the contracts come. Um, and in that situation, the second party isn't owned by you. But, I mean, in the contract, for the contract and time for the game we're making, all the decisions end up being your decisions, right? Like, we have say... But, like, you have the final word because it's your product you're yeah, paying for. Your yeah. name's going to be on it, all of that. Um, and then, of course, we have um, third-party uh, devs, um, which may publish their own. They may not publish their own. Uh, third-party devs, their main thing is they do not... 
they don't exclusively make uh, content for one platform or another, right? They're kind of just, they might take contracts for anyone, you know, make gaming software for any platforms. Um, they're usually the ones that, um, when you think about um, uh, ports and stuff, like a PC port or this kind of port, they're usually the ones that do that, unless they're done in-house by the uh, original developer or publisher. Okay, so they're based on their on their relationship to uh, a certain company or console or yeah, platform yeah. owner. Yeah, they're all kind of related to like what platform they work for. Like first okay. party, like they're part of the people who make the platform and make games for the platform. Mm -hmm. Second party, they're just hired specifically to make games only for a certain platform. And then third party, they do whatever, right? Okay. Um, third party ones are generally smaller. Um, I mean, but. It's not, you know, necessarily true. Um, or they, uh, and they also can't work for publishers, but it's more of a, you know, one, one thing at a time kind of basis with yeah. uh, third parties. Kind of contracting them out. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, with indie devs, um, they mostly self-publish, but not always. Sometimes they will self-publish and um, uh, get a publishing contract where they've made the game and the game's gotten a little bit of success and then someone else will pick up the game, right? Mm -hmm. right. I mean... Microsoft made, made uh, Minecraft, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, they did. They absolutely started it right from the ground up. No, they did not. They did, they did not. So that, that's an example. That was all Bill Gates. That's an example of the game, in, in that case, the game come, becoming very successful and then being bought up. So, yes. yes it, and, and it's you could now say that uh, Minecraft is now currently being worked on by first party, second party, and... Mm, Maybe occasionally third-party devs. I'd have to look into it. Hmm. But originally, yeah, not, not so much. Um, yeah. But, uh, and, uh, yeah, that's that, that's gaming devs and the kind of three, four-ish types there are. And, of course, indie devs could be, like, you could have an indie dev that's second-party and only makes for a certain platform, right? Mm -hmm. But you could also have an indie dev who makes for all sorts of platforms. And a lot of indie devs these days are more looking... The, the, they're, they're more trying, more trying to make their game for as many platforms as they possibly can because then they reach a wider audience and they yeah. get more recognition mm -hmm. because all their distribution um, I mean there's Steam and GOG things like that where games are pretty accessible but like those are all online they're not and they're either PC limited or you know so a lot, a lot of uh, developers try and make as uh, their game as accessible as possible with the help of the internet I'm trying to think of like popular developers that are like second party developers who well who who be some of those that we could think that, that you're, would you're, just come off the tongue you're probably having an issue because uh <laughs> over the years uh recently at least recently especially a lot of uh second and third party developers have become not so much second and third party developers they've been bought up and now work either in a gray area for a first party publisher developer right because first party developers is either already a publisher or yeah. another part of their company publishes the games they put out, right? Yeah. So what's happened a lot in the past years is you've seen um, uh, devs, second and third party, either have success or have continued success or get into financial trouble. And at that point, a first party game publisher, developer company will be like, oh, well, let's buy you up. Scoop. And depending on the um, situation and the con and you know the workings out of that, it can either be, oh, we bought you and now we're gonna completely get rid of all your assets and fire all your people or re, re you know, essentially breaking up the the, de the development team or kind of keeping the development team intact, but now you're working for us, right? Yeah, so, you're now a part of, you are, Sucked into the amoeba. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's also why we're seeing a lot more of uh, gaming ports become more um, internally done, right? Mm -hmm. So like you might have like the main team bringing out the next Call of Duty or something on Xbox and PlayStation. Like that's all one dev team. But then when it comes to PC or something, well, that was another dev team kind of. You know, yeah. they already had the game. They didn't need, need to make the entire game. They just need to make it work on PC so it was less people and yeah, got okay, dev team. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes very, sense. Very much so. And, and I mean that's mm -hmm. how you get like. Um, uh, it's usually done like regionally, right? So, so you have like um, Ubisoft and uh, EA. Oh, okay, and, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. It's know? clicking in my head now. Yeah. You'll see like every single team from like Assassin's Creed ones. Yeah, yeah. And, like okay, this one Ubisoft America, Ubisoft Quebec, Ubisoft 
Pakistan, yeah. Ubisoft, this, yep. EU, like all these yep. ones. It's like, okay. And, 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 and of course, course those aren't all necessarily old second, second and third parties, parties that got bought up. up. Some, Some of them, them are like, like Ubisoft was like, like we're going here and we're going to make a, 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 a development, development uh, or part of our company here mm-hmm. and make, make them make games. games. So, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, yeah, okay. It, 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 it is sometimes hard if the uh, name of the uh, second, second or third party dev that got bought, uh, bought up, if, if it um, doesn't, doesn't keep, keep its original team intact, intact or, or they, they just, just use the name, name right? And yeah. Yeah, it's kind of hard to be like, well, is it still? Yeah. You yeah, know. It, it, and yeah. That, that, yeah, that's when it gets annoying because yeah. cash grabs. Cash grabs, yeah. I mean, I, I, I prefer to look at all games individually, and um, True. you can you can you can look up um, when a game was public uh, or when it came out, and look up and see who worked on that game, and that is, I would say, a much better way of uh, appreciating those who actually made the game. Is, is that's a good point. To see who worked on the specific game, and I mean, hell, it's all there in the credits. You can look in the credits; it's all right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fair. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. So that was our little bit longer than usual um, educational uh, part. Uh, oh, I like that. Troy, since I've been talking for a bit, did you What's want up? to uh, talk about any specific games you've been playing this week? Uh, first up, I wanted to start out with... Uh, which one should we start out with? I guess we should start out with uh, Jedi Outcast. Because that is a... I'm finishing... Uh, I'll talk about this later. But I am finishing up uh, Jedi Academy, but a, a very similar game that I wanted to kind of continue because I love these games is Jedi Outcast, which the naming always confused me because it's Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy, but the one before that, which is this one, is Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast. It's a prequel uh, in the chronological thing, but it came out after it in the real world. Yeah, yeah and it's a... Uh, the naming always confused me as a kid, and still kind of does, because even when I'll play this, I'm like, oh yeah, this is Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. And I'm like, nope, no, it's not. But it's a, uh, it's very similar, but I do like it in the fact that it does make you, it does force you to play in, with like, for this, like, the first couple levels, you have to play with um, only first person uh, shooting. You don't, like, you're not a Jedi yet. Uncivilized. Very uncivilized. Like, I'm... I run out of ammo constantly, so I'm running around with a stun baton half the time, just jabbing everyone. No as... viper swords in this game. No, mm-hmm. just just this really strange looking like claw of a stun baton. Okay. And a part that frustrates me about the game is that there's there's whole points where I won't. There's sometimes the switches will look like regular things and i won't know what the switch is and i don't know if that's part of just the game <laughs> but it uh it's another epi- another uh, level of challenge for me yeah but um i do love it there's not a i'm not too far into it yet so this is just me taking on the first first imperial base and yeah, it's a fun time. Have you played it before? Uh i've not not that i can remember or recall. Um i, I mean i will say Star Wars and them not releasing the you know series chronologically. It sounds on par for them. Was this uh, uh was this Lucas Arts uh, who who developed it? Lucas this was Lucas Arts. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This was um. They're apparently because I wasn't aware of this because I only had like the GameCube and the Xbox growing up when I was a kid. So they would they were on these these were on those consoles, and those were like the ones at Blockbuster. So I never played. Uh, the whole series of games that are kind of like they're Doom kind of games. Yeah. Um, First person shooter, kind of, you know, you're in short hallways everywhere shooting everything. Yeah, yeah, it's really pixelated, mm-hmm. but um, there's a whole bunch of these Star Wars ones with this character, and I have n- I've never played any of them. Yeah. <laughs> but so this is just my little, I guess, foray into it because there are other ones that I. Uh, bought recently on the Steam sale mm-hmm. for like a dollar each. Oh, yeah. So I'm wondering about playing them because I don't know if it's uh, <laughs> if it's really that entertaining or if it gets a headache, if it gets more and more uh, pixelated and that quick. Yeah. Because I don't know if that's something I would want to <laughs> I'd want to force on people. I mean, I check it out. I mean, it, it looks it looks good and it looks like it runs smoothly. I would, you know. That's fair. Seems interesting, but I also just. Any, any game, game I, 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 I want to play to, 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 to see what it's got going on, you know? That's true. The only thing that frustrates me, I guess, about this with shooting, especially, like, with any of these guns, is I have to... I, I, they do um, splay out. Like, they do have, 
Like they're they're not all gonna go towards the center. It's like, using cone of fire. fire. Yes. Okay. I yes. Got you. So, so I can't. <laughs> you have a hard time. So I have to just run up to people sometimes and shoot them point blank like five times. Yeah. And at that time I might die. Mm -hmm. So it's very. In that point it's frustrating, but it's challenging. So I'm having a good fun time with that because that's that's what this kind of game is. Oh no! Yeah, for sure. Yeah, cone of fire. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's it's great, great for the, the uh, 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 randomness, randomness of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It's and it's it's yeah. very fun because I will sometimes hook around, uh, like doorways and hallways, and sometimes the cone of fire can help, but sometimes I run out of ammo very quickly. Oh yes. Oh man. But yeah, that's all I have on this game. I mean, it lo looks interesting. I have to yeah. check it out at some point, maybe. It's a fun time. Oh yes, cone of fire always is. Yeah, so what do you have going on? What do you have to to bring to the table to show? What's what got new? I mean, I always got. I, I mean, know you always got, but I want to see. I want to see what I you mean, got. I mean, some. I just. I I have, I, have, I, have, I have, Oh wait, this is this is no nah, no nah, no. Nah, oh, nah. we're in the I wrong always, space. <laughs> we're in the wrong space. I always I always appreciate Bioshock and always love it. It's it's a great game. Great game. It's beautiful. It's yes yes, yes. no I. I I also, I also reached, reached a point, point in Bioshock 2 where, where I'm like, like I need to stop playing, playing like I'm a big daddy. daddy. Because <laughs> even, even though they, they put, put you in the suit, suit even though, I mean, it feels, feels like you have a little bit. Because, I mean, Bioshock 1, one there's so many means that, like, one hit you, you right? right? Oh, my God. Um, Stun you. Yeah, yeah. Push you. Bi Bioshock 2, it's like, you're, you're slightly more protected, but you're not that protected. Yeah, like, you can you can get your bell rung once or twice. Yeah, you you can take, I found you can take, uh, I have, I think, the first or second health upgrade, right? I can take, like, three good hits, and then I have, like, this much health left. Oh, my God, because they, the, oh, they had the brutes. Yeah. They have... Well, yeah, just not just, but any, like, anybody with, like, because, like, they'll give enemies pretty much every weapon you have, basically. Yes. Uh, I mean, there's... A lot, a lot of shotguns, shotguns and machine guns, guns, I'll admit. Like, the enemy has a lot of shotguns, shotguns and machine guns, guns the regular right. ones. But, I mean, a couple good shotgun, shotgun blasts, and, and you're, you're not, not feeling too great. great. Um, no, because then they also start getting, they also start getting the, like, the armor-piercing ammo, oh, yeah. and it's like, that's that's still on you. Because, like, you get in situations like this right here, because they just throw waves at you with the little sisters. I, I love that addition to this, to two, because it is such a, f I don't dread it. But it's and it's fun to plan, but they it is frustrating because sometimes they'll just overwhelm you completely. I I really prefer it. I mean, and it's not really an addition. This happened in Bioshock One. Was it in one? In the final level of Bioshock One, you dress up as a big daddy, and you have to get a little sister to get. Oh, yeah, you do. Oh, yeah. Yep. Wow. Yep. I mean, it was it was a lot more clunky and it was a lot more linear. It wasn't as open. Like it wasn't every level. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. Every, every level was just, was just oh, you, you gotta, gotta kill, kill uh, some uh, big gang and ra uh, save, save their sisters. sisters. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, you, you don't have to do this, this right? Um, no, you don't. You don't, you don't have, have to to progress, to progress the story, the story but, but it gives you, you a ton, ton more at them. It it, it it lets you, yeah, it lets you it lets you actually stay in the fight longer. <laughs> like I don't really, it to me it's 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 necessary to play the game because I I. I have to do it every time. Yeah. I, 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 I kind of want, want to, uh, I, don't I don't think I will, but, but I, think, I, think I think at one point I need to, because, I mean, I'm a sucker. I'm, a, I'm always saving little sisters. sisters. I can't help it, man. But I can't rip the slugs out of their... <laughs> what is it, their spine? I don't know what it is. I, I can't remember, I can't remember. But also, but also Bioshock 2, you go outside in the water a lot more, and there's slugs here and there that you can pick up. And, That's true. Uh, but no, the uh, I, I kind of I am curious about how much... Um, how much atom reward is uh, the difference in the atom reward between saving them without getting any atom from any of the bodies versus, you know, saving them with getting all the atom and then harvesting them, no atom collection, harvesting. Because to me, if, if you're going to reward, you know, the real atom, like the real messed up atom, you know. The junkies out there that are. It would be like ridiculously high amount of atom. Yeah, almost double, I would think. Oh, yeah. No, but Bioshock 2, great. I love it. Um. I, uh, I, I I also kind of want to touch on I'm, I'm changing up my uh, playthrough. Mm, how so? Uh, I I really with, with doing the first impressions and the reviews, I can really only like focus on like one playthrough at a time. So I'm gonna put uh, Skyrim and uh, Dawn of War uh, forty thousand. Uh, sorry, uh, 
Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War on hold until I finish Bioshock uh, 2, and then I'm probably going to finish up Warhammer and then go back to Skyrim. That's um, fair. That's fair. That's a good way to do it. I, I, just, I just really prefer doing the first impressions and the, the reviews a lot. Um, well, it, 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 keeps it, it keeps it fresh in the mind, mm -hmm. and it keeps, you, it keeps you engaged with it more rather than just jumping from one to the other. Well, I mean... Yeah, I'm, yeah, it definitely, it definitely keeps, keeps it fresh in the mind, the playthrough, but, like, me, if I load up a save and everything, like, I might maybe have to look at my map or my quest, but, like, once I load up that save, I'm like, I know exactly where I am, let's yeah. go, <laughs> you know? Mm. Oh, yes. No, absolutely. Uh, I think that's enough on uh, Bioshock, just a quick uh, Bioshock appreciation, as always. Yes, as you should, because that is, that, that was one of the first times, uh, like, I had a discussion, like, someone referenced a, a game being, like, a piece of art. Yes. And like I I thought about it for a second. I was like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like this is one of the first games I thought about like, oh, this game <laughs> like this game made me think, but it's like no, like this game this game like made me interested in learning other things like what it's about. And I was like, this is really well made. And, and, and not just that, but I mean, I can't remember the first game that made me do this, but but mm. if a game can make me stop playing the game and look around and say this is nice. This is interesting. I want to. I want to just walk around because people people give walking simulators shit, and I'll talk about one <laughs> later. But if a game is so compelling that the environment that the developers made can make you stop and look around and stop playing the game and just say, "I want to learn about like what this world is by looking at the architecture," that's a damn good job. That's a oh, damn yes. good game. And that... Bioshock does a very good job, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Ease. Did you, uh, what game did uh, you want to talk about next? The forest, because forest. this is uh, I've been going on a journey in the forest. In the forest, because oh my god! <laughs> Wait, is this? No, I'm not wearing this shirt. Okay, good, 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 good. <laughs> oh god! If I was that's a, what you're worried about. If I was well, what if I was wearing the shirt that I was wearing when I was first doing this? Oh man. oh man, it is. It's very similar, because again, I have not done survival horror games very much mm -hmm. which is why alien bioshock or alien bioshock alien, alien bioshock, Isol <laughs> alien bioshock isolation throw them together uh -huh. alien isolation um just uh threw me for a loop especially with the crafting mm -hmm. but this is going a step further with that because you have to like you have to build uh, an encampment you have to maintain water and food C can you i can i because like i've heard roughly of the game but like what is the game? Does the game just start out and you're in the forest and it's like you have health, you have health, you know, and stuff, mm. or is there like a story of like oh a plane crash or something? It, there's a plane crash of you, like you, you're on the plane with your son. You wake up and there's someone like covered in blood, holding your son and he runs off, and that's it. Okay. Like there's no narrative. You wake up, you get an axe. Here's some supplies from the plane, and it's randomized. Each time you start, no, I don't want to spoil. I did have to restart. I won't spoil why, mm -hmm. but uh, it does start you in a random, ran in in a couple different like predetermined locations. So, so it is a rogue like game. Is it? Is that how you would describe it? Ro rogue like? Ro rogue like? Just I mean, I was going to save rogue like for later as a gaming term, which mm. I still will. But basically, rogue like is. The argument of roguelike um, is the game is infinitely replayable, right? And so roguelike will will give you the same progression overall, but it will make things random. Like, oh, you won't enter... The, the first town you enter won't always be the same town on the adventure, right? Yeah, And yeah. in that same town, there might not be the same number of resources. It's There's different ways of doing roguelike, and this one sounds like the starting area is mostly the roguelike uh, thing. Yeah. I don't know if you're... In, is the entire map different every time, or you don't know? No, I don't think the map is different okay. every time, uh, because there were some points I had to look up a couple things about the game mm -hmm. to plan accordingly, and it is... Uh, it is... Same map every time. Yeah. And it, it it's... Oh God, I don't want to ruin too much, because, but it's not, I don't think it would ruin too much, because it has been out for a while, mm -hmm. but... Um, there's there there it's as you wherever you land you need to figure out where your neighbors are yeah very quickly mm -hmm. and friendly neighbors or enemy neighbors or both i have yet to see friendly ones okay okay right, i have yet right, to right. see friendly I ones i feel you i feel you so it's um it's interesting learning where boundaries are but also like really having to listen mm -hmm. 
because you have what's really nice about this game especially with recording it is every day is about 25 minutes long Mm. so it's pretty nice to do like an episode for a day because is, got... is, is there a night cycle that's the same length of time or mm-hmm. do you just go to sleep at night and night passes so you have to have a uh to go to sleep or to save you have to have a um like a little camp mm-hmm. you have to have like and you can make ones depending because the resources are spaced out um throughout but you have to have like a certain amount to make because like sorry going off uh you have to make a little encampment yeah and you can do a temporary one but you have to start cutting down more trees to make a permanent one Mm -hmm. um where was i gonna go with that uh you had asked about night the length oh nice if you don't sleep if you don't sleep i haven't not slept Mm -hmm. i I assume it would probably negatively affect your next day energy and health and such yeah Um, because it's you have to get like a like a food source. Mm-hmm. Got to have a source of clean water, and you have to have a place to eat yeah. and or cook your food. Is it then inventory management, or is it kind of like you have a food source and a fire? We know you're going to eat, or do you have to eat every single day too? You have to eat okay. every single day. So very much survival horror. Yeah, 100% you, survival horror sim. Okay. Absolutely, and it's 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 getting used to the survival part because also. Uh, fun thing that I learned, not spoil, trying to spoil. If you light a fire, that tells everyone where you are. Smoke signals, baby. Oh my God! <laughs> so if you keep lighting the same fire, same place, people are gonna come see what that's about. You gotta have a couple fire circles distributed around the whole island and the forest, and and like, all right, it's Wednesday. I'm gonna go to the edge of the forest and cook over here. Or you gotta build a fence, but also okay. like. If you, because so there are defenses you can make. There are defenses okay. you can make, but you have to spend a lot of time and energy making them. And as you saw, like I just opened up my inventory. You can have, especially when you first start or land, you'll have like sodas and you'll get like some alcohol. So you get some free stuff, but it's not exactly healthy or the best at fueling you. Yeah, and I haven't noticed too many uh, negative effects. But if you just drink, if you just hydrate off of alcohol, it's not that great. <laughs> No, I, no, in real life it's not, so I don't think no. it would be in a survival game. What is frustrating is, or there's a lot of things that's frustrating, but it's a, it's a, it's a really fun game, and I would recommend to check it out because it, it is like you're saying, it is that roguelike element of like, it's, it's there. You don't know what you have to start at always. Yeah, you know, and so, it's, yeah. and it's fun learning to manage it because sometimes, and I had to restart it a couple times once. Uh, It'll start. It'll start you right next to a spot, and it is mm. oh god, freezing. Yes. It's it's, a, it, it's it's you load in. You're like oh, hardcore play through this time, isn't it? Yay. Let me murder some things to start with. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's a it's a really fun time. Oh yes. But that's uh that's about all I have to say on the forest so far. I really enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, I will say if you um I had to bump it down on graphics to make it lookable. <laughs> Lookable, uh, view, run, run, view. Run, 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 run. Well, it could run. Oh, it's just your, your FPS was the motion blur. No, no, the motion blur. Oh, no, th- made me nauseous I, because I, I, I would you would look over a little bit, everything would just it was it was un it, it was unwatchable. Yeah, I, so I, I, I had to put I, it to very low. I hate low motion blur. blur. Motion blur. Oh my can God. go. I I am paying to see the game, not to see if I want motion blur. I had motion blur, y'all. Wow, Fun. the immersion. The immersion! Yeah, I'm like, I don't want to make the person watching this sick. I don't want to make myself sick. Yes. I have motion blur every single day. We all do. We don't need it in a video game. No. Um, now, there are some games that do motion blur well, but I don't think every time you move the cursor, the entire screen should blur. No. That's not how my motion, my vision is affected by motion. Yeah. Yeah, nonetheless. Ooh, can you... Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can just straight up... You, 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 you can draw them in with food or something, or they oh. just randomly around. The They're just randomly around. Okay. I'm surprised, and maybe it's just you know, the, the the ancient system that I got going on. But sometimes they'll just like come right in front of you, or like a deer will just show up right in front of you. I'm like, all right, and I just hack the deer to pieces. Mm-hmm. Now I will say, I I, I, I do cut out um, when you do kill an animal, uh, you skin it because yeah. you have to skin it because the skin's a separate. Um, Object That's a resource the, that you can use to build and or craft, it would seem, and the food is on the inside, yes. Through a loading screen, I learned you can get lizard armor, which sounds like a lot of fun. 
So it sounds like a high level. Uh, I know, I know, that's gonna be a lot further along. But um, what was I saying? Uh, oh yeah, some sometimes it'll just run right up to you, and you can just hack them to pieces. Nice. <laughs> it's like, oh Jesus, okay. I mean, but, I don't know the lore, but if it's an undisturbed forest that only these evil creatures have been in, or whatever, and you're the first human to show up, and animals are probably like, oh, what's up? Oh yeah. Well, the thing is, you can also have trophies. So like, you you can have like a deer head, mm-hmm. but also like you can have like um. Like a like a like a dove head, like a bird head, or like a rap. It's weird. I'm going to post my dove head that is this small. And yeah, small. it's very strange, but fun game, good times. I mean, it seems interesting. I don't know yes. survival horror. Well, no, let's, let's segue into uh, yeah, uh, Colot. It's not a survival uh, at all. Uh, you don't need to survive too much. Uh, you don't need to survive. No, it is a walking simulator. Remember when I said we were going to oh, talk about yeah. walking simulators? How are you? What? What? How, what? What kind of walking? Uh, like it's like a speed, like a jog, like a speed walk. You have a run. There is a run option. There is a run option. There is a run option in this in this uh, uh, survival sim. Uh, it's uh, it's more of a horror game than it is a. Uh, oh, survive! Yes, it is. Um, Ooh, this I don't looks, know. I don't, I don't, this I looks spooky. I don't know if you've heard. It is. It is. I would say the environment is the so far. I've only found one like actual enemy, but the environment and not just like the wind and the cold, but the environment is the enemy. Um, in that, like, I found a, a page in like a stone circle. Uh, it maybe will be up here in a little bit, or we can just skip to it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, I found a. Stone Circle. Are you investigating like a cult thing, or is so, it? Oh, oh, uh, oh! This is pretty. Yes. Oh, this is very. Yeah, pretty. It, it looks nice. Uh, 2015 looks pretty decent. Mm. Um, but you're investigating. I don't know if you're aware of the uh, in the. I believe it was. Oh gosh, can't remember. It was either the 60s, 70s, or 80s. One of those decades. Um, <laughs> uh, some college hikers or skiers in uh, Russia or Ukraine went up a mountain, you know, and then they were all found co- like a couple of weeks later, all dead, mm. right, under yeah. mysterious circumstances, and everyone's speculating. Oh, oh, is it the one where like one was like found like meters yeah. away from the campsite yeah, and like all yeah, this weird yeah, like and, stuff about it? The, the the prevailing like what happened in real life is hypothermia can do weird things to your brain and make you a little loopy. Mm. Uh, that's what a lot of people think actually happened, but in this game. And this game very much leans into the supernatural. Because, like, you Ooh. saw me start. I was, like, on the outskirts of a town walking through a windblown. And then you walk into some trees that are all dead and, like, leaned in but still mm. on the ground. And then you fall into a rock hole. And immediately you're here in this tent in this place. And in the tent is the map and the compass that you get. Oh, fun. Okay. So It just drops you straight in. It like, just, all right. Yeah, yeah. It's just, like... Yeah, yeah, that's it. it. And I, I, I will say, uh, Sean Bean narrates the uh, oh, the environment because, because like, like it'll be like, like, are you coming here for me? And it's like, like what, what, what? Yeah, it's Ooh. it's very Ooh. it's very walking simulator mysteries going on. Oh, that's fun. But I will say, compared to other walking sims, sims I'm aware of this one. Like, you have a map and a compass. Um, the only thing I noticed in my first impression of this that I was pissed about. Uh, so you got longitude and latitude, and the map on it has some longitude and lat- latitude already on it. Of like, oh, you should check these out, you know. Yeah. Um, and of course, there's like a glowing red light in the distance, and I'm like, Ooh. what the hell is that? Yeah. Um, but the uh, you have a journal as well, and you'll find in the environment like a longitude and latitude like scribbled on a cave wall, and I'm like, oh, let me open my journal in game. You can't. There's nowhere to take notes. Oh. And I'm like. I should be able to write on here. Yeah, I should be able to put this somewhere. Yeah, that was my only frustration. But as to the uh, as to the uh, in the the environment being your enemy, let's see, uh, should be coming up soon. Does it physically? I mean, I'm sure it physically slows you down. So, I mean, there is deep snow that will slow you down, and your run is limited. You have a limited run. Ah, yes. So. Oh, God. I walk into this circle of stones and very creepy, eerie. Oh, this, yeah, this looks like a, this looks, yeah, this is an alien crash site right here. I don't know. I uh, don't oh, like you it. do have a flashlight, too. Um, uh, and the story is mostly told through, like, notes. Uh, some of them are read, like, they actually have audio dialogues on them. Okay. Um, some of them aren't. Some of them are just, like, notes that you have to read or whatever. 
but it's uh, just a note here on this uh, little rock, and why don't I pick it up? There it is. And I get some lovely narration about it, yada, yada, yada. That's all well and good. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to skip over it, but you did mention earlier that you, uh, uh, there are enemies. Now, do you, can you fight back? Is it, I don't uh, know. I haven't tried yet. Ah, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, um, okay, 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 okay. I literally ran into enemies. Like, I found, like, some pit holes in the ground with, like, stakes. I'm like, oh, these are, you know, I need to watch out for that. And I look up, and there's enemies, and I ran away. Yeah, yeah, so they out do, of there. At least the, two, the enemies I ran into were, like, area limited. Um, and yet it does tell you something about the game, you know. You can run left uh, left shift, you know, that kind of thing. And, of course, I'm just looking through the menu here because this is also... When I picked up this uh, article, this is the first time I had read the uh, the whole logbook and everything. So gotcha, they, they do gotcha. give you some information uh, hmm. with your map and your compass and everything. Very helpful. Um, but as soon as I'm done with this, I learned that not all, all notes are sometimes uh, dangerous. All notes are sometimes dangerous? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, essentially, I pick up this note and an explosion goes off. Huh. You get some warning, which is how I was able to survive it earlier. Oh, good. Um, and the notes are the save points. So okay. you pick up a note, you're saved. Yeah. So I... Interesting. It's a walking sim. There's no danger here. It's just, yeah. It's just going to be spooky. Ooh, spooky. Ooh, environment. Oh, wow. This is... Yeah. Wow. Oh, no. Oh, and, God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. Yes. So... Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very, Thanks for the heads... Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But watch uh, my save point. Uh, I believe my save point's right at that note. Yeah, my save point's oh, right okay, at that yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. fair. So if, if you pick up a note and the action of picking up the note would normally kill you, you then have your save point to know, oh, shit's about to go down, I need to get out of here. And what's interesting is there's these glowing bodies that you kind of follow and glowing footprints, right? And oh. all I can assume is they are the... Uh, like, like the, the hikers, hikers. like the, yeah, the yeah, impression yeah. of the hikers that are that are, that are left. So you sort of have a trail because like there's two of them there. Yeah, so yeah. you can sort of follow them. So it's very leaning into the sci-fi supernaturalness. Oh, that's so cool. Compared to other walking sims, I much prefer this than uh, yeah, that's a lot of ones fun. I've heard of otherwise. Oh, but yeah, okay. I mean, I don't think you can do combat though. Oh, okay. like all your controls are like zoom in to investigate, open your map, use your flashlight, but. Those enemy, those uh, traps I found with the spikes at the bottom, those enemies were near them. So I'm like, maybe I can get them to run. I don't know. That's fair. It, it, it's a game that I will possibly put some hours into and maybe do a full review, but it also seems like a game that, like, oh, you got to be, like, you know, yeah. no, nose to the grindstone really looking into it. So. Yeah, you have to be searching the environment. You got to be looking for the right notes, like you're saying. You got to. I, I, I will say, in my, like, I think I spent like 40 something minutes on it. I was able to make it from where you start, which is roughly the center of the map, to like almost one of the edges of the map. Oh, okay. So the map isn't too ridiculously large, but there is a lot of elevation differences, and I'm sure there's some caves if I just haven't found them yet. So there's... is there is there music playing as well, or is it just is it just the sounds the environment? Yes. Okay. So like when creepy stuff happens, you know, there's some. I wouldn't call it music, but there's like. Noises, ambiance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. But it's okay. it's mo most of the game is like the wind, the snow, the creaking of the trees that you're around. So yeah, a lot of it's like I'm not sure was that a weird noise of some monster about to attack me or was it just the wood around me creaking in the wind? I don't know. Fun. It's, it's that looks like a lot of fun. Oh yeah, it's it's tons of fun. And like I said, 2015, and it it still looks very good. I'm gonna put that on my list to play because that looks like a good time. It's, it's, it's uh, so far was very good. Uh, stressful and worrisome, but very good. Uh, <laughs> did you have some uh, another game? Well, that's a good segue because that was a stressful and worrisome that uh, I'm started playing Outlast. Uh huh. I forget when it came out, but that is a game that uh I don't want to say is a. I guess it's similar that it's a walking simulator mm -hmm. in that you have to, uh, you have this camera mm -hmm. and you can only have night vision and flashlight if you have your camera up. But also, if you have your camera up and you're recording in that flashlight, people can see that and they'll discover you. People? So the enemies are people? Yes, yes. Uh, you are in, you are reporting, you are a reporter and you are reporting or recording everything you find and see at this, uh, the name is Mount Massive, 
Insane Asylum, which I think is a very strange name for a massive. How's that spelled? M a s s i v e. Okay. Massive. Okay. And it's a. Uh, it's I guess it is a walking simulator because it is a. Uh, oh, it's a creepy. <laughs> Oh well, yes. yes. Okay. It's it's that kind of thing where it has it has jump scares, but I really love how it forces you to use the night vision more than anything else. I think that's the best part about the game that I've seen so far, is forcing you to use it and like see the world around you through that only. Now at this point, I'm just like going through a hallway. I'm looking up like notes. I'm looking up. Um, uh, like documents, batteries. You have to have batteries for your flashlight and everything. Um, and I'm trying to remember what else about it. You can't fight back. That is one thing they do make very clear in the very beginning of the game. It's like, yeah, it. It's like you. You can run and hide. And I wonder about like, compared to like Alien Isolation, say there are specific hiding places like if you go here you can stay in this location as an attempt to like so it's like a room not like oh there's a cabinet over here right yeah like these are just rooms in this game it's like you someone's hunting you you better like go by but go behind like close doors behind you you have to go in places to make them not interested okay which i think is a fun difference of the game it's more you're actively, you're actively trying, trying to, to get, get away and obscure, obscure where you are, you are as to, I'm just going to hide in the lock. Gotcha. Yes, yes. yes. And that's what, I, that's what I think is, the, is a good difference, or a good juxtaposition from Alien Isolation. Gotcha. Huh. Yeah, I know. That makes sense, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it is, a, I guess, similar to a colot, I think is how you say it, right? It's, it's very much the environment, because you got a bunch of mentally unwell people running around here, and they're, uh, they're, not all of them are very happy to see you. Well, because they got. Oh, there it is. It's a. Uh, that's our sponsor. H two O, baby. That's our sponsor. H two O, baby. You, you, you know what that means. Oh, it's H two O. It is. Mm. Delicious H two O. But I, I also wonder what I think about this, and it's not really made clear. If how much I'm recording technically, and how much you're just using the night vision. Well, well, well. I, I have to use the night vision every time I'm recording. Okay. Every, anytime you bring up the camera, you're recording. Okay. But it's a... Uh, I don't want to say I want points for what I'm recording, but I'm wondering, like... You want to see the final cut. Yeah, you, I want to see... You want to have executive, you know, decision I wanna, over the final cut that gets released. Yeah. It's my IP, you know? I'm doing this. I want to see, mm-hmm. like... Uh, <laughs> I want to know at the end of the level, like how much, how much weird shit did you record? Yeah. How much, how much did you get on the on camera? Because I like the ambiance sometime of just like the no lighting sometimes to kind of freak myself out. But it's a uh, this time I'm I'm recording nothing, so I'm like, but I get penalized for that. I don't mm-hmm. know. But mm-hmm. other than that, it's an interesting game. I would I'm think enjoying. the game would already penalize you because aren't you you're, you would be consuming battery which you can replenish. But true, true. How much? How how often and how 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 plentiful is that uh, resource? I think a funny step to take, not a funny, but an interesting step to take with a uh, with it would be like uh, memory space on the camera because oh, yes. it's yes. like it's a t- it's a handheld camera it's nothing big so it would be like hey you have to you you, you actually uh, uh you're, you're, you're a journalist so you just have a vest with 28 <laughs> pockets of different terabyte hard drives just, you're yes. good oh my god just plug They're it in all new, wired <laughs> just new sd card yeah. new sd card new sd card oh man no yeah that that that, that it seems interesting yeah, yeah. but like your objective is just to record and get out, I guess. That's it. Yeah, it hasn't really made me too clear on, like... Specifically what other than that. Or where to go. Mm. And that's that's something I've always had a hard time with uh, some survival horror games is... Mm-hmm. I don't... I, I need direction sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I need direction sometimes. So I need a, a big dude to throw me through a window. Tell me where to go. So it, it's very much in the Resident Evil, like, hey... You're having fun exploring, but we're going to throw you through a window now, and you'll be fine. Don't worry. Yeah. And it'll be like, hey, run. You better yeah. hide now. Yeah. And it's like, where wh- where even am I? And it's like, yeah. you better find out. That is the one thing I liked about uh, Colot. You kind of saw a little bit, like, I loaded in to that area, and I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, this is where the open world. Because before then, I was like, it's about as linear as the others, yada, yada, yeah, yada. Yeah, yeah, But then they loaded me into that area, and I'm like, ooh, ooh. 
ooh, there's lights we... and stuff, and I have a map, and I can... Just, there you go. Yeah, so, very... <sighs> so much yeah, fun. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no. To me, whenever you're inside in a horror game, it kind of... Even if there are options of where to go, it kind of feels rather linear, because where are you going to go? Upstairs, downstairs? Yeah, there's only so many options you have eventually. Yeah. Man. But, yeah. Anything else? You, uh, you have something you have next uh no i definitely have more games to talk about let's as do it always troy let's go into it oh my friend. man uh i i uh, i guess we should yeah we should get into i've been uh what you've been doing been reviewing or uh, working on reviewing uh frost punk oh yes yes you have mentioned it's it's made me want to be in a snowy place <laughs> <laughs> somewhere away from this heat uh well yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's good. It's good. You have a, uh, yeah. You you have resources and you're balancing, you know, what your people need and mm. you know, what you can provide them. That's that's pretty much it. Not a li- uh, you, what did you met? What you call it before? Like it a is, list manager. It is. It is a well, it's a city building sim that requires you to manage resources in order to build the the the, the city, of course. Um, and it's RPG. Okay. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I, I believe... Yeah, no, I'm currently playing in the uh, endless mode. Because originally when the game first came out, they just had different story missions, right? And the thing that everyone hated about them was you would get invested in the story of your city or whatever in this specific you know way you built it or whether or not you chose faith or purpose or you know what ad- adaptation laws you chose. Um, and of course, yeah. Yeah, adaptation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, they, they have different effects that either uh, lower discontent or raise hope and allow you to build sometimes new buildings that will uh, affect the people surrounding them. So, huh. Yeah, it, it's very much like it's not a lot of planning um, because you really usually can't plan unless you have a, an abundance of resource, which the whole game is about having not an abundance of resource. Uh, but in endless mode, you can ne- you never have to end the game. Right. Okay. Um, which does usually lead to a mega city with about 700 population, <laughs> uh, abundant resources if you have built enough stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, no, the uh, the, the storyline games, uh, uh, missions are, are still, I think, where this game really shines because then that's when you have a real story. You know? Yeah, you have something you can connect to. Yeah, it's something you can connect to and actually um, it's also... Uh, you're invested in it. Like, in the Endless, there's some stories. Uh, they're usually revolving around um, either the map you choose, because that decides what's around you. Um, and you can also choose settlements or not. Um, to have settlements, which is like, oh, your scouts found a mine. Do you want to dismantle it or, you know, send an outpost there to yeah. have the, bring the resources back? Um, okay. So, there, like I said, there's lots of options. But to me, the Endless mode, it's good, but it's not... It's not the story that you get out of the story mode, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, now, you... Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of how I was going to word this. It has to do with, like, dealing with the, the, the content or the discontent. Is just, is just yeah. dealing with that, uh, dealing with, like, uh, like food shortages, or do you have to, like... so Like, how do you deal with, like, the okay. social aspect? No, of no, no, yeah, I feel you, I feel it. So, there's the discontent and the hope, right? Essentially, discontent will rise if things go badly, right? If people don't have houses, if people are cold and freezing, mm-hmm. if they're not getting medical care, if yeah. they're not, uh, <laughs> you know, if things are going badly, if people are dying repeatedly and, you know, there's not a difference, you know, people will get upset and your discontent will rise. If it, uh, There's one law in the adaptation that allows you to either extend shifts or do an emergency 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 shift that forces uh, uh, the people working at like a sawmill to work for 24 hours. Oh, okay. That'll boost discontent quite a lot, but you might be able to get the amount of resources you need to lessen the generally growing, steadily increasing discontent because you don't have enough wood to build houses, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, okay. now, now the fighting arena law that I passed earlier, and yeah, the beacon was built. So I built the beacon Hope Rose, right? Uh, the beacon allows you to send scout groups out. Um, but the fighting arena, you build that, and people can go there and fight, which will steadily lower discontent during free time because people can fight. Yeah, blow off that steam. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. So, so there's lots of different stuff to control the population, but a lot of it is passive. 
a lot of the uh, immediate reactionary stuff that you can do is accessed through the purpose um, law tree, which splits into either faith or into order. And, mm. one, and order is more of like, we have to do what we have to do to keep working. Yeah. Keep working, we're all in this together, yada, 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 and that raises hope that way. And uh, or there's faith, which is like, oh, just just, just pray, we'll pray to God. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, they, they both, both have similar, similar things, things that either um, increases productivity at near like, like they they have, they have different, different buildings, buildings, right? And they all kind of do the same thing, you know. Uh, it's yeah. just it's just uh, how you want to go about it. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, like faith is probably the better way to go about it if you, depending on what you need, right? Because faith, you just have to build churches. You don't have to staff them. Order. That's true. You have to build patrol uh, guard stations, which you have to staff. Yada yada yada. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, you gotta gotta take care of those services. Yes, yes. There's um. Population. Oh, um. Do you have to uh, deal with like uh, individual peoples who are like leaders? Do you have to, you have to assign certain people to certain roles? So, so, so how it works is, so I'm building a uh, cookhouse here. And uh, well, there you go. You can see my people working. I got five people at that building. I got a ton of okay. people at the outer piles. So you have in the bottom right, like your workforce, right? Mm-hmm. You can't use kids unless you pass a law to where that you can. Uh, and after that, you can even pass another law that allows you to uh, assign them to unsafe jobs. Yes, it's it's very well. I mean, because it's it's the end of the world. It's the end of the world. The, everything's freezing over. Ignore the fact that we're in a hole of burning coal, and we all have black lung in a year. It's it's fine. It's not an issue. Um, but yeah, so you assign people to different things, and uh, they work there at work time between X, Y, and Z, and they produce resources, and you have limited resource capacity unless you build resource depots, yada yada yada. Hmm. So it's very, it's very well done, tight knit, and like. I, it can go on endlessly, right? Like that's Fun. the thing I love about it. Um, but yeah, no, the story elements of it definitely shine during the uh, uh, the actual story missions, not this endless mode. But endless mode's quite fun in itself. Uh, yeah, no, I, is that like hold on real quick? Is that like a mine right there? So what the the like symbols on the ground? Um, I'm trying to build a hunter's hut to get me more food. Um, yeah, there we go. I think I ended up putting it there. But the icons on the ground, you like that little tree icon area. A wall, wall drill can go there. there. It, it will just, just drill into the wall, ice wall and get wood out of the frozen wood, right? Okay. But okay. there's limited area. There's limited resources on each map, right? I mean, of course, there's some resources scattered about initially, but like, there's usually only like two or three coal mine places to build a coal mine. You can't build them anywhere. There's usually like two iron or, or sorry, steel uh, places, uh, iron veins to where you can have steel works. So. You're, you're, you're limited, limited on your, uh, locations. You, 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 well, locations, yes, but also on the amount you can produce in each map, right? Yeah. So it's very much about stockpiling. Okay. Especially because during the, uh, when a storm comes, when a big storm comes, your, uh, food production buildings will not work. Um, you're fun. Yes. Yes. Fun. Yes. So you have to have enough food if a storm's coming. Damn, yeah, yes. that's a lot of management right there. Oh yeah, it is. I mean, you can pause the game unless you can do a thermal mode. Well, yeah, that's the other thing. You have to keep the temperature above a certain level in everyone's workplace and at their homes, otherwise they start to freeze. If they start to freeze, you need to open up more medical posts, which also do not operate unless they're a certain temperature. And there's there's like four different difficulty settings. I'm usually on normal, and like that's like. Okay, I see the game. And there's like, I think two levels higher than that. And the hardest mode, oh, uh, sorry, there's two levels higher than that. And there's also like survival mode or something, like a hardcore mode. No pausing. No pausing whatsoever. Oh my God. It's, 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 it's very much a, oh, Dark Souls can be a difficult game. This game, even if you're playing it on normal for the first time in the story missions, you will probably have to start over once or twice. Yeah, Jesus. I have to, I have to learn. I have to. It'd be like three or four or five for me because I'd have to figure out. Yeah. Who. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's pretty simple, all laid out. But when you put it all together and everyone has their discontent and everything, it's like, oh, this this is not as easy as you would think. Yeah, I could I could see something. Uh, I could see some problems piling up very quickly. Yeah. I mean, really. Yeah, I mean, I mean really, really the most, most important, important thing in this game is to expand as quickly as possible because, because the, the more, more people you have, the more supplies you can intake. So you very much have to focus on either growth or making automatons. 
mm. which work 24 hours a day. They're a little bit less efficient than people are, but they're always working. They don't have to worry about the cold. They just need to worry about fuel. Oh, that's nice. They don't freeze up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Um, yeah. And of course, there's research you can do, which unlocks different levels of buildings and everything. Um, but like I said, like that's all the city and person management. The uh, the uh, uh, the story is really where it shines, which you get a little bit, like you saw earlier, I was looking at the map there, and there's like, oh, you found something. And sometimes you'll be like, oh, you found people out here. What, how do you deal with them? Or, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. But there's a lot less of that, and they're more randomized, whereas in the uh, main campaign, or the main stories, it'll be like, oh, you found another settlement that is not doing well. They're failing, and now you either have refugees coming towards you, or we have to help them in some way to prevent those refugees from coming here. What are you going to do about it? Wow, okay. And then, depending on what your decision is there, that determines your win-fail states for that campaign. Like, there's one where you're a bunch of engineers, mostly, and uh, you're protecting a, a, a seed banks, right? They have all the seeds for the agriculture that will need to survive, and so like your mission is to build automatons, uh, who, who can, can run, run the city, city and keep you and your people fed and the seed mill, the seed banks safe. Yeah. Well, like I just said, there's a city nearby that's failing. You have to either decide to save them or ignore them for your mission, right? Mm -hmm. And whichever you decide will determine your end game uh, win fail state. Interesting. Yes. That sounds fun. Yes. Oh, that sounds so interesting. And I think there's, I think there's good like six or seven different ones. Wow. And one, you don't even have a generator. One, you are literally an outpost of like a, a main uh, uh, of one of these generator cities, and it's like, hey, provide us with stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's very interesting, and uh, I, I do quite enjoy it. It's quite pleasant. And one, you actually have to build the generator. <laughs> yeah, although it does take place before the like freeze starts. Because like, oh, okay. it's, it's like, like you know, you know autumn, autumn or fall or whatever, whatever, and it's like, oh, yeah, you're a part of an experimental group of people who are trying to, like, okay, yeah, we get it. We're mm -hmm. the, yeah. The, the, the lore of the game is kind of interwoven between all these stories, which I really like. That's fun. Yeah. They, they all exist in the same world, but I think only one or two of them kind of overlap. If uh, I could, you know, uh, overlap uh, specifically, like, said in the game, like, oh, you're from New, like, you're the settlement, uh, you're the outpost from New London. Mm. Yeah, that kind of stuff. That's so. fun. I love it. It's great. It's very makes me want to lay down in some snow. <laughs> oh man! If only I to give that. I want to give that a shot. It seems like a fun game. Oh, I don't know how good I would be at it. Well, pause, man. You just have to pause and plant. You have, you have to pause, and I mean, you both have to be preventative and reactionary, right? Yeah. Like when people give you a demand, you usually have like maybe a day or two. Oh. Fun. Yeah, oh. so it's like, it's like, it's like hey, build, build more housing. housing. And, of and of course, I will say, you have options of, like, they, they give you the demand of, like, hey, give us more housing. You can either say, okay, we'll house some people, and then you have, you know, built-in houses. Or we'll house everyone. All right, build 40 houses, because that's how many you need. Or it'll be like, I want to address this right now. Discontent will rise, but it usually won't rise as much as if you accept one of those, right? Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dis okay. Discontent usually rises um, and falls more frequently than hope, but hope is a lot. Uh, uh, unless, until you get the order and the faith uh, laws enacted, hope doesn't really rise on its own very often. Right? Interesting. Okay. So you have to balance both hope being high enough to where people don't give you the ultimatum of raise hope or. The, the, the game, game is over. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and they do give you ultimatums occasionally. Okay. Yeah. When, when you have discontent too high or hope too low, they'll be like, fix this in two days or the game is over. <laughs> it's like, okay. That's how it would work. That's how it would work. Good, good. Oh, man. Uh, do you have any other game you want to talk about? Uh, speaking of man of, of some management, I started... Troy Speaks Take Two. Yeah. Uh, I started playing some of Papers, Please. Papers, Please? Which uh, gives me all kinds of anxiety. I can't I got, imagine why. I gotta, I gotta feed my family. Yep. And I gotta get people... Um, oh my god, I gotta get people through this checkpoint. And there's so many, like, little things you have to check. Because first, they give you, like, you know, okay, make sure... Like there's like this like the for day day one they make sure you have a uh, you know only these citizens and then the next day you gotta make sure it's not expired or like 
oh my god, sometimes there'll be little things wrong, like the, the female or the male, but also the thing is, it's pixelated, and half the time, I can't tell, and I'm like, who did I just let through, and it's like, they're from this wrong, like, these things are wrong, and I'm like, what? But it is, um... You, you also oh, notice the, uh, your, your desk, desk space. Oh, how yeah. How limited it is? Yes. And, and I mean, I mean you, you only, only, it's, it's the, the first day, day. You, have you have your rules and you have their passport. passport. Mm -hmm. and, and it does, does not, not stay that. that. No, no, they, they that. start adding, well, as it gets later in this one, because uh, it says yet to be released yet, uh, they gave you, like, tickets. And it's like, okay, make sure these tickets are right. And it's, and you mentioned him to me, but this... You let him through? I did not let him through. Okay. Okay. He didn't have a passport. <laughs> I'm not letting you through if you don't have a passport. Keep coming back. I swear to God, this man... He, uh, I think he appears up on like day two or three, and he's just like, "Hey, I want to get through," and it's like, "Would you have what's here?" And he has nothing. Yeah. What took What took me a minute to, what to, What I don't want to say is annoying about it was it's a very limited tutorial of the game, mm -hmm. so it would be like, "Hey, no, it just kind of know things," and it's like I don't know how to play the game, so I didn't know. Oh yeah, no, I, I believe like very early on, like on the first day, like. Someone, Someone tries, tries to, to breach, breach the thing and get shot. shot. And like, yes. it's, it's, that's, that's the end of your day. day. Bye -bye. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't matter if you were trying to earn more. Or, or, or learn. It, 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 intentionally it intentionally interrupts your learning process of the new game. Yes. And moves you on to, oh, oh hey, now, now you have, have to manage stuff. Do you manage stuff daily or is it? You, I mean, you have to manage stuff daily, but you also have to, like the, um, uh, like what you're just mentioning, the, um, the identification of like what's a problem mm -hmm. to like bring it up to talk to somebody it took me so long to figure that out at one point but it was like you have to click certain areas and then click the rule or click what their issue is and then you can talk to them and it's like oh my god yes. Yes. just the, the the weight of all the processes slowly builds mm -hmm. and it's a it's a very fun uh it's a very fun management thing because also, like again, you have to, when you get done with somebody, you have to physically give them their passport and then you have to say next. If you don't say next, nobody's going to show up. Yep. And have these people with these ominous messages sometimes will walk in and be like, you shouldn't have opened this checkpoint. And it's like, can I help you? I, I'm not, I'm not a member. I mean, I'm just holding the gate. Yeah. Not even know. holding the gate. The guy with the rifle back there is holding the gate. You're yeah, just it's him. checking papers. Uh, yeah, look, I, it's not. It's, I'm just doing. I'm just doing a job. Look at me. Oh, man, but it's a it's a fun game. I, I'm doing um, I'm doing uh, three days at a time. Yeah. For an episode, it seems to be a pretty good length. Uh, Are you uh, at least on day one? It seems like you're approving anyone who's a citizen. <laughs> Anyone who's a citizen, yes, yes, this is the end of day one. Yeah, yeah, so you do manage your expenses every day, yeah. Yes, yes, and you can click off uh, ones, mm -hmm. like food and heat, you can turn that off, you can you can save that money. You can, you can, you can not feed your family and not keep them warm. Yeah, and, and like, you, yeah, you don't, you don't see them, but you do have, like, that status of, like, hey, they're, they're sick, or, oh, they're getting cold, yeah. but it's a, it's a very fun game. Oh, yes. It's a good time. Oh, no, I would, yeah, no. Ugh. But yeah, that's all I really have to say about Papers, Please. It's a very, like so, you were saying, it's so pretty far. simple. So yeah, far. so far, so, so far. far. It's a very, pretty simple. Very simple. I, I, I something can, to say very clearly. I can see I can see how quickly you could get overwhelmed. Oh, and, yes. I, and I see how quickly... You do get overwhelmed. Yes, I am, I'm not ready for that. Hey, man. Hey, man, it's fine. Yeah. It, this is the real horror game. <laughs> truly, truly. To be, to... <laughs> To someone who would have to work through like paper processing to like administration or to a checkpoint sounds abysmal. Don't worry, it's it's all good. You don't get shot and killed. Today. I mean, I worked at a at a box office once, and I had. Yeah, but uh, there's not like a guy like twenty paces back with a gun. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> I, I I would be surprised if that was a theater. I don't think anyone would go to that theater. Oh man, hey man, it could. Be. It could be. It could, it could be. be. Oh gosh, papers please. I love you so much. Yes. Uh, what you got going on? I have a gripe. I have a you I have, have a gripe? I, I, I have a problem and I dislike this game very much. I don't dislike I dislike the uh the model of it, I would guess. Um I did a first impression uh a week or so ago. Mm. Capcom Arcade Studio Stadium. Okay. So Capcom released all the greatest hits in a little uh, 
free package. Um, you only get, I believe, it's uh, Battle for Midway, the first one. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, now it's a semi-virtual uh, arcade stadium, right? And semi-virtual? Yeah, let's just, let me just skip in my video, too, because yeah. I, of course, go over settings and stuff. Let's see. Semi-virtual, where you can you can change what the cabinets look like. You can okay. change how the game looks when you play it. Like, is it full screen? Are you do you see the cabinet? That's mm-hmm. very nice. You only get one game free. Okay, that's fine. Okay. There's like I think 32, 42 games. Um, so you know a, lot, a lot of games. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of classics. Like there's all the midways. Uh, Mega Twins. Twins. Yeah, Street Fighters in there. Oh the yeah, Street ones. Fighter. Yep, yep. Now, how would you think you would buy them? Um, One at a time at a low price? I mean, yeah, I'd imagine like uh, 50, not 50 cents, but like 99 cents for like a game. There, or like there, one there's time. one standalone game that's like 99 cents by itself as DLC. All the others come in packs and there's like each pack is, sorry, yeah, there's 32 games because there's three packs. They each have 10 games in the each and they're each $15.99. Or you can buy all of them for forty dollars, which is like, look, guys, what? Why not? That's, yeah. You can't pick and choose which ones you want. You can't say, oh, I love all the Midway games. Let me get all. No, that's a, that's a that's a very poor marketing strategy to try to sell more games on this. If you're trying to do microtransactions like that, that's a terrible that's a terrible way of going about that. This isn't even microtransactions. This is just buy it all. Yeah, you want to screw you? Yeah, because if you buy, if, like I said. It's forty dollars if you buy all three of those packs at once, or it's fifteen ninety nine each if you buy them all. Yeah. So I mean, if you're like I said in the, in the video I did, if you're like a big Capcom fan and, and love every single arcade game they've made, just drop the forty bucks and just get, get it. it. But if you're not and only want to play some of the games, fuck you. Yeah. Like what a. Even even if you just want to play some of the games, you should be able to pick and choose. No. You should be able to be like, okay, I want to buy these three games. It should be, like, hey, I want street, I want a, I want a midway game, I want a Street Fighter game, and yeah, I don't know, I want this game. Like, you should be able to have that. Nope. You're nope. Cl- classic I uh, classic IP content. We own it. Screw you. We will decide how to sell it, and it'll be the most inconvenient way for you. Well. Yeah. I mean, but like I said, like the semi virtualness is cool, mm-hmm. but like. In this day and age, because this did come out, I think, this year or last year. In this day and age, they could have done a full VR version of this, right? Yeah. That would have been cool, right? And, I mean, hell, Capcom, you could have charged more than... You could have charged probably full retail price for all of these games, um, or, or for, you know, for this game, with all these arcade games included, which would be more than the $40 you're charging, I don't know, uh, in a VR version, and that would be great. Yeah. And I, is... I can very much tell either the devs or the publishers... Whoever was looking at this game was like, okay, we need to make sure who we sell this game to. Whenever you go to do something, there's a, like, loading... There's, like, a tip screen Mm. for everything you go to. Oh. It's like, hey, you need to know how to save and load a game. It's like, yeah, I know how to do that. It's just... I've done this before. This is... This is... Yeah. This is pretty... uh, Yeah. Well, some people... They they do go away, though, like, after the first time you see them. Okay, that's at least nice. But, yeah, no. Mm. Yeah. No, it's 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 a very strange thing. Poor when, poor poor planning. Poor poor, poor planning and execution. Well, decent yeah, execution yeah. and poor planning, yeah. Uh yeah. and yeah. Um and you do get a score total at the end, right? Um you, Yeah. yeah cuz but like yeah, I was offline, so I was like I, I don't care. But if you're like into arcade games and like you like to see your high score and there's essentially you you get a it's like cap score or something like cap, they have a score of like no matter what game you play in of any of these arcade games you will get like a score point at the end of it. Okay. Um. So that is cool. Um. But it's it's just needless minutia of how how we sell you the game. You know? Yeah. Not not I, you wouldn't say forty dollars worth. I mean, like if if you love every single game in there, yes. If you only love some of them, well then like. Pick the ones you want to play and hope that they're all in the same pack. That's fair. You yeah. know? And That's yeah. frustrating. It's, 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 it's... I see why you're griping. Yeah, I know. Like, I understand why they did it. It probably nets them more money than if they sold them individually, but they're probably asking themselves, why are our sales numbers down? We thought this would be more, you know, more popular. I thought this would bring more interest into our older games. Yeah, no. No. No, no, no. no. 
Um, but yeah, it is out there free to play, and you get uh, Battle for Midway, the first one, free to play if you want to do that. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, I mean, they did some cool stuff, I, I, I'll, I'll admit. Like, you know, you can just play the game, Infinite Lives. That is you, fun. You, you can rewind, right? Like, Ooh. you can just rewind if you die. So so it's like, oh, I, you know. Yeah, go back and redo old, something. There's a ton of old arcade games where you would play, and there'd be this one part where you'd always die. It's like, we'll just rewind, rewind. <laughs> Yeah, so they did cool stuff that's like, it's quality of life, it's great, but your yeah. package is a pile of shit. <laughs> oh, man. Man, oh, man. Did you have... Uh... I think uh, Darkest Dungeon Darkest I started Darkest doing a playthrough of, and I guess technically it is survival horror, because I you do mean... have to, you do need to buy, you do need to like... I will say this, you don't die in Darkest Dungeon ever. I mean, yeah, that's true. <laughs> But uh, this is a, uh, I, the more I play it, the more I am just falling in love with it because it's like again, like you were talking about, it's a very I don't want to say simple version of D and D, but it is like a, like a kind of a simpler version of a D and D where you have to like you have to plan uh, like where your person is placed because like there's movement mm -hmm. like if you're if you're if you're if you're not this close to the enemy or you're this look at you can't do these certain moves i, I would say it's more comp uh, complicated than D, D because this isn't D D. this is you're controlling the party yes yes the party depending on their stress level can say screw you i'm not going to do the thing you just told me to do you have to position them all correctly and certain classes and uh have uh, i think it's seven like they have they have a limited number of abilities that you can learn but they all come with random abilities of those seven or whatever yes and those abilities can only be used in certain positions in the battle line and then the enemy can move you in your battle line <laughs> it's very frustrating but also if, if, if when you're going out to a dungeon when you're going to, to you know to go embark on something if you don't if you like say you come back from a mission and you have some people that are stressed out and you got to put them, you know, you got to put them away and you got to you got to pay for, you know, them to get healed or them to, you know, deal with their issues. Yeah. You spend all that money, you go to embark on something, you don't have any money to buy torches or you don't shovels have, or anything. Yeah. And you get halfway or you you don't have the money for any of that. You just enter a dungeon. You're like, I am already gonna just gonna lose everybody. It's a, mm -hmm. but it's it's fun though. It's very fun because I enjoy I enjoy the art style. I enjoy the 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 soundtrack. I enjoy like the the randomized characters. Oh yeah. Like they're just the designs and all that stuff. But like also the, like even just interacting with uh the different. Uh, like the the shops oh, yeah. and the different the town. The town yeah also. like you have yeah. to you have to go out and embark and get like uh, uh, what are they called um, uh, heirlooms mm -hmm. and all kinds of other stuff to go and show and to upgrade certain areas I'm like I just love it because also the the enemies are cool looking mm -hmm. um, and it's not I don't know how to describe it. It's not like it's, I feel like it's unbeatable, but it always feels like I'm up against a challenge yeah. no matter what I'm yes. doing. Like, I know it'll say like, oh, this is like a standard one. It's like, no, 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 no. I could still die very easily. Oh, even even in the ones that are like, oh, it's an easy dungeon. You only need to like explore like, you know, eight rooms. It's like, okay. Mm -hmm. That's eight rooms. That's eight rooms and all the pathways between the runes because you can get into combat not just in the rooms, but in the pathways. There's traps in the pathways. Yeah. Oh my god, those traps! Cause I, I just sometimes I just keep going by and I don't see them. I just run right into them. Mm -hmm. But also, um, uh, the traps, the rooms, just like the the like a bookshelf. Say you're passing yeah. by a bookshelf, one of your party members could be, hey, like you can't, you won't even choose it. It'll be like, hey, I'm gonna check out this bookshelf, and it causes them to go insane more. And it's like, I would have liked the option mm -hmm. to not do this, but it is a. Uh, but I, I still like it though because it adds more of a challenge to it, and I like um, I like that there's like this infinite cast of people you can you can get. Yeah. It's um, I haven't really figured out how to balance leveling people stuff or leveling people. I mean, how much I should spend, how much I should you know invest in one person for another. I, I will say this. So, so you know what happens when people get str like too stressed, right? They they either, they, they either get a flaw or a or a, oh what is it? But but like either, yeah, yeah they they, 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 a... they either get something that makes them like worse or they get something that like makes them better. And now that character 
whenever they get to, to the same level of stress again, they, that will have an effect on the entire team. So mm-hmm. if you have a person who um, gets to 10 stress, I believe it is, and from then on out, anytime they're at 10 stress in the future, unless you remove it, which costs lots of money, yes. they'll start like, well, one guy will be like depressive and it's like, oh, we're all going to die down here. And everyone's like, man, yeah, you're oh, right. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm so, so sad. Just, I'm stressed out now too. Whereas if you get like people with good buffs who get to 10 and, and, and they get that good buff, then they'll be like, oh, everyone, let's keep fighting. Let's go. Yeah. It's like, like, yeah, you're right, Tim. We should. Yeah, we absolutely should. Yeah. There's, um, uh... Mm-hmm. Oh, well, just like even the narrator, mm-hmm. even the narrator, like just bums you out. He's like, you have, you have healed your party member, but only for now. And it's like, Hey man, I was about to die a minute ago. Be a bit more positive or it's like, you have returned to your hovel. <laughs> would you <laughs> it's like, be a little optimistic? No. It's a, no, no, none of that. Well, and I, I just love it. It's a, it's it's wonderful. I think it's a great design. I think it's really fun because it's also like, like a dungeon doesn't take well so far. A dungeon doesn't take up a lot of time. Yeah, no, I got you. But it's a, uh, yeah. That's all I have to say about it so far because I uh, I don't want to ruin too much of what I have recorded. I mean, the end of the game is you take on the darkest dungeon. The darkest of dungeons. Which, it, it is very much uh, Lovecraftian horror in that yeah. the darkest dungeon is the darkest dungeon that you will ever face. So <laughs> Good. Yes. Good. And, 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 and uh, yeah, I, I do love the different game modes where it's like, hey, here's one, just play it, there's no time limit or anything. And then mm-hmm. Here's another one where it's like, you have a time limit. Yes. You, you have only a limited amount of XY, like, it's like, okay. Yeah, so th- there is infinitely more and more difficulty you can play this game on well the fun part or the thing that i found or i learned very painfully Mm -hmm. i won't ruin what happened but like i was going through a dungeon and it wasn't too bad but i kept going to all the wrong places and as i'm running out of all these resources i get to the end and not even like the actual end boss but a close to the end boss just rocks me and it's like yes great so darkest dungeon is very much a game of like Oh, you saw this big bad boss, because uh, that kind of happened to me. You saw this big bad boss that can infinitely summon enemies until you kill it? Well, okay, after this dungeon, it's a regular enemy. Have fun. Fuck you. Oh, man. It's the darkest dungeon. Because I think I know exactly what enemy you're talking about. I mean, there's a couple like that. Oh, fun. Well, because every area has its own different subset of different enemies that are all True. kind of... Because every area is well-rounded to fight you, right? But within that area, there's different types. Like, there's beasts, and then there's, like, oh, highwaymen, you know? Yeah. Like, they, they all, like, highwaymen, like, that's bleed damage mostly, right? Yes. It's like, avoid yes. bleed damage. But then, like, undead and skeleton, gonna bring some holy warriors and take care of this real quick. Oh, yeah. Even, uh, like... Blight and poison against skeletons. I've surprised. I'm like, all right, I'll take it. Mm-hmm. If I can poison them, great. Yep. Anything. Yeah. But yeah, that's all I really have to say about it so far. Nice. Darkest dungeon. Very. Darkest. Very dark. But just keep your torches lit. Yes. <gasps> yeah. No. When I was when I was messing around with that a little bit for my first impression, I was just basically running <laughs> holy warriors the whole time. Oh yeah. I was just like, all right, I'll just heal myself. It'll be fine. <laughs> Oh gosh, I uh, I really only have oh I have one more game I want to talk about this week. Oh, um, there's other ones I can talk about of course as well, but this one of course the classic Stardew Valley. Ooh. Uh, oh, this is a, this is in the middle of a, a cutscene here. Oh, brilliant. No, it's uh, it's good. Welcome to Pierre's. It's Pierre's, yes. Yes. What is uh? What is the objective? Is it just a <laughs> oh, the objective in Stardew Valley? Yes. Well, you uh quit your job at a large corporation in the city and moved out to your grandfather's place after he died and willed you his uh, little farm out in Stardew Valley. Oh, good. Uh, if, uh, what what was it called? Harvest Moon. Har- Har- Harvest Moon was the not an actual sequel, but like the per the the uh uh concerned ape. The developer of this, mm-hmm. like he was very much inspired by it. I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna make that. Okay. And he okay. made it by himself. And to this day, like you'll still see on his Twitter and stuff, like, hey, new update coming soon. I heard about the glitch. Sorry guys, it'll be here and you know we can too. Click. It's like, great. Thank you, Concerned Ape. Um, Thank you. Your game is your game's good. Um, I'll I'll get a full, full review out later. Don't worry. There's a lot in the game. 
uh, and you're a great dev. Uh, keep keep doing the the, the great dev work. Um, but yeah, no, it's yeah. You move out there to the farm, and part of it is like you gotta fix up the farm and you know make money. I mean, you don't have to. You can pass every single day doing nothing. Um, the game, uh, but the IRS does come eventually. I don't think so, actually. <laughs> And I mean, you just start the game out with some gold, so you can be like, yeah, you're property tax by. Uh, but there's also like people in town that you uh, talk to. Of course, I'm in Pierre's right now. This is the only reputable store in town that sells seeds, okay? Only one. The, the, the large company that you quit, they have a marked, like a, you know, certain large company marked. Mm. They have a branch in Stardew Valley, mm. and their whole thing is that they keep on, like, that cutscene you saw earlier, the owner of that mark comes in, well, sorry, the manager comes in, to come in. And, and it's like, hey, everyone, 50% off discount said JoJo Mart. It's like, oh. Yeah. Get out of here with yeah. that. Get out. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I never shop at, uh, at uh, JoJo Mart. Always shop at Pierre's. But yeah, no, it's a, it looks very nice. I will say... Yeah, there's a couple things. I mean, the whole game's about resource, uh, your energy management and your um, health management when you go into combat. Um, this is the farm right here. This is this is the farm. They, there's been some updates, and you can now like choose different styles of the farm. There's like you know a river farm if you're into fishing and stuff. I mean, all of them you can do every activity you would do on any of the other farms, right? Mm -hmm. uh, except for uh, mountaintop mar uh, farm, it actually has a mining area that resets. Oh, I think fun. every season. Because otherwise, otherwise you have to go, go to the mine. So, so very flexible on everything, and I mean, it's just it's so pleasant. <laughs> and uh, if you uh, if you don't mind, like the audio on it, I love it. I love oh, the audio. If you'd like to, to uh, if we could both uh, shut up for a minute. Yes, yes. It's just, it's just very nice. It's just very nice. Hmm. It's not like super fast paced or anything. The audio, um, I mean, when you get into combat in the, uh, when you get into combat inside the, uh, what is it called? Inside the mines and stuff, it can be like fat, like the, the audio can pick up a little bit, but even then it's not super quick. There's combat in the game? Uh, in certain areas, yes. In the uh, mine area, there's a, it's an old abandoned mine, mine and so you have to go down level by level to activate, activate the elevator, the elevator on every five, every 10 levels, I think, is where <laughs> the elevator's at. So, so you, you just got to do that. that. Um, Fun. And there's, and there's of course, course, slimes and there's okay. uh, bugs, that bugs that fly around. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very... It's got a whole combat... combat. Like, like, the game's, the game's got, got every, uh, something for everyone. Uh, and, and since the game, like... The, 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 the ranking, ranking of the game, game like, of course, course there's money. money. You can always get more and more money. But um, there's a shrine on your farm with a note from your father saying, I'll be back in two years. Yada, yada, yada. And it's like, okay, old man. Right. But at the end of year two, your father does show up, your grandfather does show up and is like, he gives you like a ranking system based off of like how much money you made in the game, how many friends you made, if you got a wife, you know, like, did you, did, did you uh, uh, repair the local community center to its full, that kind of stuff. Okay. So there's a cutoff of like your score. But, but also, also you can play the game infinitely. infinitely. Oh, okay. Like, That's fun. Like, like, like there is, to, to the, the point, point that, that there's even a system in this game to where if you get fed up with your wife or any kids, kids you have, have, you can go to the, the wizard, wizard who will, there's a wizard in town too. Just, there's a wizard. It's, 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 it's very, it's, it's very like low fantasy, fantasy like, like, I feel like it's set, set in like, you know, it could be set in modern day, low mm -hmm. fantasy, you know. I was going to ask, like, what, when was it set? Because like, I was like, this is a town, but I'll see buses. Like, when is, like, yeah. when is this? Yeah, I mean, you walk everywhere. There, the bus and there's a train later that take you to other areas. But, like, yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, there's even a system for divorcing your, you know, spouse. And if you divorce your spouse and there's kids, the, your kids, like, turn into birds and fly away. And you're now, you're now divorced spouse, like, dislikes you and will and i think uh i think can never be married again but i'm not sure about that that is that is so funny yeah the game goes oh. on for so long that you don't even have to restart the game to play every aspect of the game you want to that is hilarious <laughs> yeah. how considerate of them how absolutely considerate of them it's it's a great game very very much a gem of indie games um <laughs> if that's a genre yeah 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 
Game's a game, y'all. Game's a game. Game is a game. No, it is. It is quite pleasant to play. It's fun. Yeah. And uh, the, the funniest thing I find is... Uh, so, in town, you can't edit anything. Uh, on your farm, you can, of course, plant or grow anything or cut down anything. But areas that aren't in the town center and aren't on your farm, you can, like, cut down trees. And, like, you can still interact with. Mm-hmm. And so... You're not limited just to your farm on how to make money. You can like go outside of your uh, outside of your farm to other areas and be like, okay, I'm gonna put a ton of beehives or I'm gonna put a ton of uh, just start claiming tree. property and be yeah. like, all right, this is my spot well, now. Well, you don't claim it, but the other NPCs aren't gonna mess with it. That, that that's fun. Well, that's fair. It doesn't yeah. allow you to stop you anywhere. And it is, uh, I think, up to four player co op now too. Oh, yes, you can do a co op. Yes, yes. I, I, well. You have to, like, in-game make a, like, hut for the, you know, person to sleep in. But, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a very well-rounded, uh, great little pixel art uh, farm management uh, social interaction game. Fun times. Very, very fun. Very relaxing. And, I mean, the day, the, the day cycles are, like, you know, 10, 15 minutes, depending on, you know, how much you do in each day. So, okay. It's not bad. No, not bad at all. Very, very solid game. Yeah. That is uh, going to do it for this episode of Our Gaming Life. Uh, I have been a formal bust. This is your boy Yort. Uh, thank you all for watching. Feel free to do the stuff. And as always, take care of yourselves and drink some H2O.